So after watching this video lecture, students will be able to explain the difference between a line spectrum and a continuous spectrum and how they're subsequently sourced. You're going to be able to differentiate between uh, the ground state and the excited states within an atom with respect to um, the electron's position. You're going to be able to explain the energetics associated with movement of electrons in an atom. Um, you're going to be able to calculate energy um, of the specific orbits um, in hydrogen-like atoms, as well as calculate the changes in energy associated with the electronic uh, transitions between orbits in hydrogen-like atoms. So we've now looked at um, the emission of light from hot body objects. We've looked at the explanation there um, and how that works. We've also looked at the photoelectric effect and how that works. We understand uh, the wave particle duality of matter. The last uh, thing that has not been able to be explained by the basic uh, wave model of light um, is the emission of light from electronically excited gas atoms or the production of an emission spectrum. So we're going to go ahead and look at what an emission spectrum is um, and what it means to be an electronically excited um, atom. So the explanation of the line spectra uh, to an observable phenomena uh, is directly connected with Bohr's model. Now, uh, basically what Bohr created or what he postulated um, was a quantum model for the hydrogen atom. Um, and what he said is that the atom uh, is basically shaped like a solar system. So it kind of looks like what you see here. And what he postulated was that only orbits, um, so what he means by orbits is these, these pathways, um, with specific radii and energy are permitted in the H atom. So basically he said that there are specific pathways um, or orbits that exist in the hydrogen atom. Uh, the second postulate he proposed was, is that electrons in permitted orbits, so in these pathways, um, are uh, only allowed in these specific energy states. So what does that mean? That means that um, they will remain where they are and they don't uh, radiate um, any energy. They're, they stay in their pathway. And the third um, postulate that was shared by Bohr is that um, energy is going to be emitted or absorbed um, by electrons when they transition between uh, different orbits. So these are the three postulates that um, Bohr proposed. Now in order to understand um, how he came up with these postulates and how they were able to be um, basically uh, supported uh, through experimentation, we need to understand um, a few things about radiant energy. So um, Basically, most radiant energy is polychromatic. And so what does that mean? Polychromatic means that it has um, a bunch of different wavelengths um, associated with it. So something like uh, the sun, something of that sort, it has all the different types of wavelengths present um, in its radiant energy. So um, something called a spectrum is produced um, when you take polychromatic light, such as sunlight, and pass it through a prism. When you do this, those individual wavelengths get split um, and are shown in what's known as a continuous spectrum. So basically, because all wavelengths are present, you have all colors um, present from you know your, your violet all the way to your red. Um, so that visible spectrum is allowed to be seen um, when we uh, past this type of polychromatic light through a prism. Now, not all radiant energy, so not, not all radiant energy is going to behave like um, radiant energy coming from the sun. So not all of them will give this continuous spectrum. Um, and when that is the case, we end up with something called a line spectrum. So a line spectrum is a spectrum containing radiation of only specific wavelengths. Okay, And this um, feature, this characteristic, is what um, led Bohr to uh, some of the conclusions that he had made about a hydrogen atom. So, so uh, from the observations of the line spectrum, when hydrogen at gaseous hydrogen atoms were excited, um, led Bohr to his conclusions based on uh, the Bohr model that we see here. So the specific lines 
associated with the excite, um, excited atom, hydrogen atoms, um, was believed to be caused by the transitions of electrons from various orbits. So Bohr said that there were specific orbits, all the electrons could hang out there, and that when they transitioned between the orbits, um, basically something like a line, uh, line spectrum could be produced. So what we're seeing here is basically the return of an electron back to its original state. So when an electron um, that has been excited um, drops back down to its ground state, um, a photon of light with this specific wavelength is released. And this, the same thought process is true for these other specific examples here. So these are all caused from different transitions within the atom here. So they may be from a higher state to a lower state um, than what we saw in the previous examples. So um, applying this concept um, uh, and, and what was physically seen, um, Bohr made some assessments and some details about um, how we refer to the electronic positions um, and the atom state. So Bohr called uh, the energy levels um, or allowed energies associated with an electron's position, they called, he called them energy levels. Um, the ground state is the lowest state of an electron in a hydrogen atom. So in this case, n equals 1. So the uh, closest location to the nucleus, so that closest orbit that's allowed, this would be the n equals 1 energy level. That would be the ground state. Um, an excited state for an atom or for an electron is when an electron is in a higher energy uh, level than the ground state. So anything um, beyond this, if an electron gets um, absorbs energy and jumps up to a higher level, it is called an excited, it's called being in the excited state. Now, um, as I said, to get into this excited state, you have to put energy into the atom. Something has to be absorbed, whether it's light or um, some sort of energy source to get those electrons to jump up into the higher energy states in order to be excited. Now, when those electrons drop back down to the ground state or drop down to a lower state, um, light is given off, and it's given off in the form of uh, photons. Now, when you have a specific single atom um, and its excitations and de-excitations that are being observed, you're going to end up with only specific transitions that are allowed. So you might go from the n equals 2 to the n equals 1, or the n equals 3 to the n equals 2. Those are going to give you unique specific transitions, and that's what leads to the line spectra that we saw earlier. So now that we've looked at the quantum model um, for the hydrogen atom that Bohr postulated, we're going to go ahead and look at um, some of the mathematical expressions associated with uh, this Bohr model and this specific quantum model. So if we look at our equation here, um, we're basically expressing the um, energetic value of a specific state um, or a specific orbit in um, a hydrogen atom. So n represents that energy level or that um, orbit that we talked about, and that's represented right here. Um, in this uh, specific equation. And this equation allows us to look at the specific energy values or energy levels available to an electron in a hydrogen atom. Um, so <clears throat> when, in order to understand, you know, our signs and stuff in this calculation, which obviously has been derived, <clears throat> um, we need to understand reference points. So um, when an electron is completely removed from an atom, or it's, when it's ionized, um, our n value is going to be considered infinite. Um, now, our negative symbol here allows us to um, reference our atom and the presence of electrons in specific orbitals in our atom um, with respect to an electron that's been completely removed from the atom. So, basically, that negative sign is, is establishing that 
an electron that is bound to the nucleus, so in one of these accepted um, orbits, is going to have lower energy than an atom, or excuse me, an electron that has been completely removed from the atom. So we can calculate the change in energy associated with electron movements between um, energy levels uh, in a hydrogen atom by basically uh, calculating the energy of our final state and subtracting it from the energy of our initial state. Um, and so calculation would look kind of like this. Um, notice we're using this uh, E-value um, formula that we talked about on the previous slide. So remember your N equals uh, the position that the electron is in. So the N sub F would represent the final position that the electron is in. Um, same thing is true here, and uh, N sub I represents the initial position that the electron is in. Um, and we can simplify this equation to look like this, um, where we're just subtracting uh, our 1 over N squared values from one another, and then multiplying by um, our constant that we see here. So let's go ahead and apply this. So right here we've been asked to calculate the energy need to move an electron in a hydrogen atom from its first energy level, so n equals 1, to its third level, n equals 3. So we've been given two values here. We've been given our initial value, and we've been given our final value. And we can go ahead and plug that into this equation that we just talked about. So your delta E is equal to negative 2 point, sorry, 178 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. And then we can multiply this by 1 over 3 squared. And then we can subtract our 1 over 1 squared. Okay. And if we plug this into our calculator, we're going to get uh, 1.936 times 10 to the negative 18. So our change in energy is going to equal this many joules. So in order to go from my n equals 1 to n equals 3, energy has to be put into this specific atom, um, and this is the quantity of energy that is required to make that transition happen. So let's go ahead and look at this next problem. So this asks us to calculate the energy released when an electron moves from our n equals 4 state, so this is our initial state, to a final state, which is n equals 2 in a specific hydrogen atom. Okay, we're going to once again use this delta E um, equation that we used before. So that's going to be equal to negative 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18th joules times 1 over 2 squared minus 1 over 4 squared. Okay, and if we plug this into our calculator, we get a delta E value of negative uh, 4.083 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Okay, and so in this situation, we're going from a higher state to a lower state in terms of um, energy levels, so energy is released when uh, the electron makes this transition. And remember, when an electron goes from um, a higher energy to a lower energy, so from excited to ground state or a lower state, um, photons of light are released. So there's some energy release in that process, and the energy of the energy value of that photon that's being released for this specific example is seen here. So uh, basically Bohr's model um, established that um, electrons exist at discrete energy levels or discrete distances um, from the nucleus. Um, the energy, uh, energy is involved during transitions of electrons between these different energy levels. Um, Bohr's model only works um, for hydrogen or hydrogen-like atoms. Um, it doesn't work for um, polyelectronic uh, atoms, so atoms with more than one electron. Uh, 
and we'll talk about uh, why and, and what's actually going on in terms of Bohr's model versus today's model. But uh, Bohr's model allows us to understand uh, the many concepts within the atom. Um, and uh, and because uh, this uh, Bohr's model only works for atoms that have a single electron, um, it does let us to um, think that the electrons, in fact, don't move around um, the nucleus in perfect circles. Uh, we do know this from our current atomic model, and we'll talk about uh, why that is exactly um, in lectures to come.